I'm not a part of a mega chant. Everybody come see the green show. Get a row ball, triple loops and bow. Everybody come see the green show. Get a row ball, triple loops and bow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blake and Sales Show with Mark. For over 10 years, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to have some fun. Let's welcome your hosts, Blake, Sal, and Mark. Welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket back. Welcome back to that same old place that you laughed about. Well, the nights have all changed since you hung around, but those dreams have remained and they've turned around. Who'd have thought they'd need you? Who'd have thought they'd be back here where we need you? Back here where we need you? The tears in my lap, cause we got him on the spot. Welcome back. Welcome back, 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 welcome Let's bring on my co-host and his bird, um, <laughs> and who scored more points recently than the College of Biblical Studies. <laughs> Podcasting, Sal, how you doing? You remembered. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they suck. Holy <laughs> shit, they suck. Yeah, wow. For those who missed that, the um, College of Biblical Studies lost a legitimate game in the um, D1 women's basketball, 159 to 18. That was a <laughs> game. It was on ESPN app and everything. Completely legit. That wasn't a that game. Was a... That was a slaughter. So, all right. What's um, what to bring? What did I say? Oh, <laughs> um, what's bring on? Biblical other... studies. Okay, got it. I the biblical studies. Sorry about that. It's the College of Biblical Studies. Let's bring on our other co-host, <laughs> and the legend, the man who grew up with the TV show where the theme song we're playing. Um, <laughs> are good. How you doing? <laughs> Oh, uh, fine. Hey, you, you really went old school. I mean, we're talking, you know, Sal. Sal. Gabe, Sal. Gabe, Kaplan. Gabe Kaplan and Welcome Back Cotter and the Sweat Hogs. Oh, my God. It brings back a lot of memories. Yeah, this is all Sal. So, Sal, I'll just officially introduce the song we're listening to before it ends. Uh, yeah, this is uh, John Sebastian with Welcome Back. Yes. Oh, so. Ooh, ooh, Mr. Cotter. Mr. Cotter. Ooh, ooh. There it is. There it is. So, I think <laughs> there was a new intro. Uh, I'd like to thank Kurt Hoffman, friend of the show, for sending a new intro. And also, I got some surprises for you guys, also on the soundboard, which we'll get to in a couple minutes. But um, the brand new theme song, we, we changed the theme song. I, I st- Dad, I knew you'd recognize it immediately. That is the oddity theme from the WWE days. It'd be that me and Dad used to use that for the wrestling room. I figured I'd bring it back for the main show. I've been wanting to bring it back for a long time. So there we go. Brought it back over here. I'm very happy to bring that song back. So, um... Right. There's, there's no big spiel today. I'm, I'm, we're, things are changing, and I'll explain more in a minute. But we have a we have a special guest on the air on the uh, line here. I didn't put her on the run sheet. I didn't have a chance to, but I do have her theme music loaded up. I'm on my own against the wall. The pressure's building, but no, I will never fall. Instead of trying, they hear me roar, and now we see that I'm way better than before. I never needed you at all. Then you fall down. I'm gonna watch you fall down. I'm living large now. I never needed you at all. Things don't fall down. I'm gonna watch you fall down. I'm living large now. I never needed you at all. Let's bring on the um our our actual local TV star, my wife, the one, the only, the beautiful, Mandy. Welcome back to the show. Hello, gentlemen. And as I was saying in the Zoom chat, it's the College of Biblical Studies, not Basketball Studies. Ergo. Basketball isn't their specialty. 
I'm not gonna bullshit <laughs> you. I really thought when you put that that I said something wrong. <laughs> I said something wrong, so I was correcting myself. <laughs> That's very like me now to mess up my own joke. <laughs> like, I, I thought it happened there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I thought you were correcting my joke. <laughs> well, I was going to chime in, but I needed my introduction. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, I mean, this wasn't like a quiz thing for some biblical college? No, this is a legit. No, it's, like, Sean didn't believe me. So I literally looked it up on the ESPN app, and it was legitimately a game that happened with, like, there was nobody in the audience. There was like, well, like 40 people in the audience. There was a really good thing that we found. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just battle around. And those were only support. the people that wanted to get out of Bible study? Well, the funny part is there's a graphic. I have the graphic here, and there's nobody at the stand behind this one shot. There's literally nobody at the stand. <laughs> well, this game was a road game. It was, it was, it was a gambling. I mean, thing. it's just really proof that not even Jesus could have saved them. Okay, there so, it is, right off the bat. Indeed. So when you say there's four people, that did that include the referees too? I don't know. That's <laughs> really I can it was in the conversation for me and Dallas. It was very recent. We just it is we live yeah. with- and honey, honey, you'll understand this one. And okay. Jesus. And Jesus. Sorry. There is five <laughs> people in attendance. And it, and his okay. good and his good friend Jesus. No, it, it okay, so we were cleaning up our Christmas decorations and all of a sudden I have Blake hand me this wreath and he goes, Oh, here's here's this nativity. And I'm like, Oh, and Jesus, like Peggy <laughs> from Hamilton. <laughs> By the way, so I did look it up. I did the picture from the conversation with Sal. The apparently the the building, the um the center they were in holds hold 6,500, 7,600 people. There were 65 people in the building. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in their defense, how many people is the spirit of Jesus? Fair enough. I mean, that's like AEW right? on a rampage night. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, it could have been a full house. We don't oh, yeah. know. Well, because the, the question is, it wasn't like a spotlight, like when he faced Nick McMahon in that match with Shawn Michaels as his tag partner. <laughs> oh, jeez. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, were wait. their uniforms white? I don't know. That's a good question. Let me look. I don't even know. No, off white. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you're no, telling me not. that? <laughs> so you're telling me there was more fans? I feel fans... like that's false. That's false advertising. If they're uniform. ironically the whole team. So, so there are right. more fans. <laughs> there are more fans in the stand than an AEW Dark show. Oh, <laughs> and during the or pandemic. Dark Elevation or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they were going to the bathroom. Oh my god! <laughs> all at the same time. All right, all right. Let's get into things here. Okay, first of all. Normally, I would throw it to commercials or whatever. We're not doing that anymore. We don't have commercial spots. We're not throwing it to anything. We're not doing everything. I'll explain more in a minute. So, wait, you're like the College of Biblical Studies. You're not throwing anything. Oh! Oh, there it is. Do you have a rim shot on the soundboard? I don't have that, but I have other stock clips. I'll sound blue that I will get to in a minute. But, plugs as always. I do have to get plugs out of the way. Because you have a rim job? What? Don't don't pick up Mandy's book. I know I am her children's book. Fuck them kids. Hey, Sean, fuck. Go pick up my kids' book. <laughs> fuck them kids. <laughs> on Amazon, kids. Barnes and Noble, and RNC Publishing in English and in Spanish. And if you didn't know already, right before our show goes up on um, last Friday, right before the A e. Mandy show is finally back in the new year. Right before they're actually recording this after us for a change because of the we're recording this a day early because of the weather in Wisconsin. We're recording this a day early. So they're recording after us for a change. But they will be back this Friday before us. So go listen to their show right now. So oh, I can't wait, wait to honey, listen to their next topic of interest. Well, I can't even say, honey, what are you guys talking about on the show? Because you haven't recorded it yet. So I can't even do that. <laughs> but I can give a teaser yes. that my rosebud and thorn are about, oh, shit. I wrote it. Um, yeah. it's it's about charity, Gypsy Rose, and drama, and, and family, and family, and family drama. Yep. <laughs> so there you go. The Danny and Mandy show available on all podcasting platforms. But speaking of podcasting platforms, we have changed platforms. We've been on Spreaker for the last about five years, and ever since we went into back to being independent after we left the Holding the Void podcast network, we were on Spreaker. Well, I um, mm-hmm. was doing some research during the break, during our little break, and I found out that we can move over to Spotify for podcasting for free. Um, so I spent most of the break getting everything changed over and transferred over. So now we are on Spotify for podcasting. And um, you can now go to Spotify and find us. And here's some cool little things you can do. Number one, I put videos up now. I can put the, like, a minute. I'll tell you about a video you can go watch right now on our feed. Video clips will be over there for you to watch. 
on the, from the, from here on out, especially on Wednesdays or Thursdays, whenever I put them up on the feed from the show. Number two, if you go on there right now on this episode, on the bottom, it says Q and A. You can give us comments and review in comments right there on the episode. We'll read it on the next show. We will do that from now on. So if you want to get comments, and also one more important thing, please follow the show. We um I I want to see how many people we can get to follow the show on Spotify. No, everyone I everyone from I know has Spotify. So go and follow the show so we can get our numbers up. So that would be really cool if you could do. So no more crazy plugs, no more crazy commercial breaks. We won't be doing that for a while. But most importantly, I joked about Mandy being um a TV star. Uh, Mandy, uh, on Monday night, was on TMJ4 News. It's the clock hour uh, for the Pirate Fair Climb. So, honey, why don't you tell everyone what that was all about? And I'll tell everyone they can watch the video. Um, I mean, you pretty much said it all. I got to do a spot with a local reporter about Pipe for Air Climb, my efforts. Not dad shirt, but very nicely done. Very nicely, um, done. Very nicely done. Seriously, we're done. Um, may uh, I also interject and just say really quick that your hair was like on point. Thank you. I had just done it the night day before, so thank it you. looked really good on camera. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and it was just I always love an opportunity to talk about the charity and the climb and the work. So this will be my ninth year, which is crazy to think about. And it's, so. it's crazy. So what we'll do is, if, so if you want to see the video, it is up on all our social media platforms. I actually shared it to everything, the Blake and Sal show, the Nathan and Andy show, Instagram, it's everywhere. But also, you can go to our Spotify account. I think even Howard Stern um, shared it too. I doubt that. That would be awesome though. <laughs> but, um, and then if you, um, but if you go to our Spotify account, you can also watch it there as well. It's about two, and a, two minutes and 30 seconds. There will be a three minute spot coming later on in the week. I, what time did that, air, what day did that air, honey? Do you remember? I know they told us. I don't remember. This- it will have actually aired by the time the show is posted. So maybe I'll put that one up airing... after this on the feed. There you go. Yeah, oh. it's airing at 6 a.m. on okay, Friday. There you go. There you go. Well, I'll, maybe I'll put it on, on the feed right after the show so people can see that too. So people can then have their morning coffee and watch. Pretty much. Indeed. Pretty much. So, all right, before we get to the run sheet, so I said to um, you guys, I have some surprises on the soundboard. Besides our normal that we end, ended our year with, with um, fuck them kids. <laughs> um, Fuck Cody Rhodes. Um, <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Kurt Hoffman, I literally sent him, sent him a message. I'm like, I need this. And he took what I said and went uh, 101% better than I even had in my brain. <laughs> so, did, did Kurt go off the reservation again? Oh, no, no, no. He did something that I, I'm happy about. So we have some new bits okay. on. So. From today on, I'm not. I'm not gonna. This is the first time I'm really setting it up. But in the future, I do have three new clips on the soundboard that will be randomly played if if they're needed. And they're for okay. all three of us, guys. All three of us have one. Um, we'll start with Dad because this is this is, this is actually really funny. Uh oh, what is going wait, on? Wait, 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 wait. What? Wait, I feel like you need to wait because I'm pretty sure all three of these things will happen in the show. You know what though? I'll actually use the first one because I do have something right with the first one. How this? Let's see who Sal hated today. <laughs> <laughs> so I am. Um, I, wow. uh, I was joking with Sal that I was going to make the Sal hate list on my phone for when he came on the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now do you have someone already? I actually do, but before we do that, I do have to actually hit this. And now, let's see what's going on in the wild world of sports. So, I have a note in my phone. It literally says, um, Sal, complaining to me during the Winter Classic. <laughs> during the Winter Classic. All things to complain about. Um, no. The digital ads on the ice were sideways and bothering him during the show, during the game. <laughs> Please explain yourself. So, you know those ads outside the blue lines? Right. It bothers me that they're facing like the nets. <laughs> like, if you're watching on T, obviously they're not physically on the ice because they're digital. Wouldn't it be smart to turn them so they're facing the hard camera? <laughs> I dealt with this rant for 15 minutes. Okay. Or Literally 15 minutes. But, <laughs> but so you'd, if they do that, 
Wouldn't it kind of like read upside down or backwards? No, just like turn it so that the, the logo <laughs> is facing the right way. If people are wondering, this is what I do with every day. This is what I do with some of them every day. Okay. All right. Why I bring you to the show because some of these rants are worth bringing out to the air. <laughs> but I forget like there was a logo because... on the ice, and I'm like, I couldn't even like tell what it was until I literally tilted my head 90 degrees because I couldn't see what it was because it was I... sideways. Holy fuck. Normal. Maybe... Face the camera. Oh I, I, I think that Sal should voice his concern to people higher up in the organization. And then demonstrate the difference between away from the nets and, and into the nets. nets. And doing this, apparently. <laughs> or, or you can go like this. And like, no. be, be, because of how you per, put these things on camera, I now have this permanent neck injury where I have to be like this all the time. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I'll be calling my attorneys. <laughs> all right. Uh, can, we, can we ask um, Gary Bettman about this? It sounds like you want him dead. <laughs> no, you meant Twitter, but that is pretty funny. No, no, he, <laughs> just, he funny. just wants he just wants him to disappear. I know you bet, <laughs> I know you bet on Twitter, X, but that's pretty funny. <laughs> so, all right, real fast. Um, I want him axed. <laughs> Talk to Elon Musk. Let's um, let's let's actually. Let me look, at, I do have some stuff I want to get to. First of all, the World Juniors happened this past week. I do love a couple of weeks. I do love. It making sure I bring it up because I do spend two weeks watching it in in the best part about this one was the games are in the morning. So man didn't have to deal with watching it in prime time this year. It was all in the morning <laughs> all the games because the games were in Sweden. So all the Team USA games were like at 10 in the morning. So it was actually nice and refreshing. But um Team USA they won the gold medal for the fourth time in the World Junior only the fourth time by the way they won the World Junior gold medal. Um they beat Sweden in the home country by the way six to two and by the way, you want to hear heel heat? Team USA coming out for this game. Holy hell, the heat in the building. Go ahead, honey. Go ahead. Was there was there a big fight at the end of the game? I'll, I'll tell that in a second. Oh. Honey, your head, right hand up. Go ahead. I would like to thank the Swedes for hosting the World Juniors as well as IKEA. That's right. <laughs> that was worth story. That was very funny. And, and, and during the, the during the periods they're playing music from ABBA. Actually, can I just say that I appreciate <laughs> the crowd in the gold medal game. They say they, 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 it was so loud that the announce team, you could barely hear the announce team. It was so loud in that building. Maybe game. if they would have brought the Americans out to Chikakita. <laughs> but um, it was, a, it actually, the commentary team actually compared it to like a college hockey game. It was so entertaining and so much fun. Um, I'll be right back, gentlemen. I'm going to go fill up my non bite worthy pink Stanley. Yes, the non target. Got it. And on target. Yeah, that's perfect. We'll get to the sports stuff once it comes back. So anyway, um, by the way, Team Canada did not qualify for the medal round this year at all. They were not in the medal round, which is a big surprise. Oh. Shocked to everybody. Um, Holy cow! Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Team USA won the gold medal game six to two. The game was a lot closer than the score says, by the way, <laughs> because those last couple of goals came in like the last like three minutes, like three or four minutes of the third period. So, like, it was a really good game until the end of the third period when Team USA says, fuck it, we're winning this gold medal. We're just going to keep scoring goals. To answer your question, yes, there was a big fight near the end of this game. Apparently, these two, te these, two these two teams legitimately don't like each other. Nice. They have had a rivalry for, like, four or five years. So, like, they were explaining it during the broadcast how they just don't like each other. It was very Team Canada, Team, team, Canada, team USA women. It was very much like that, where the two teams do not like each other on the ice. I think this was like. So they were fighting, they were pushing the shot. It was a crazy end of that game. Like, I wasn't sure how the game was going to end because there was so much fighting going on. It was a crazy ending. And then they all shook hands afterwards, just like respectable hockey players do. <laughs> as, you, as you do. It was really cool. Um, good they, game. Good game. Good game. Pretty much. Wow. Pretty much. But it was really interesting to watch the medal ceremony in Sweden because you had to give the silver medals to the home country. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was such a weird thing to watch. It was really weird. <laughs> But uh, it was a, and, um, next year the tournament is in Ottawa. Yay! Well, the year after it is going to be in Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota St. Paul. Wow. That's intriguing. Okay. So that's interesting. The year after, so the next two years will be in the um, North America region. So everything will be normal East Coast time zones. So East Coast Central time zones. That's, that'll be great for, for Minnesota. They need oh. that. Big for Minnesota. That. It's really big for Minnesota. It really is big. Right. Uh, although the women, 
the women's side of the World Juniors actually happening up in Utica, New York in April. And our, our friend who's going to be on the show in a couple of weeks, um, Tim from Random Chatter, is going to be there. Oh, nice. I talked to him about it. He'll be there. It's his home arena for the for the Utica Comets. He's a season ticket holder. The farm team for the Devils. He's actually a season ticket holder for the Utica Comets, and he has tickets to the Women's World Juniors in April. So Nice. There's that. Oh, speaking of women's hockey, this is my segue. Um, the PWHL got started in the last couple of weeks. And well, yes. was, like a week and a half. The well, teams with no names. Teams with no names, but <laughs> nobody seems to care because people are showing up. And that's the important part. If you're going to start a new league, you don't be like the XFL and nobody show up. You actually show up to the building. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what, what, what was that? The, the X at who? Yeah, you don't be like that and actually not show up. You actually show up in droves. Because um, the January 2nd game, the um, Ottawa-Montreal game, they set a record for 8,318 people in a women's hockey game, which was the record at the time. Now that's just a, yep. Can- now that's just a Canadian record. But um, the, um, where they, where they? the now the new record is now 13,316. Because an afternoon game on January 6th, this is unbelievable, an afternoon game. Between Montreal and Minnesota, in Minnesota, drew over thirty fans. That is incredible. It, it, Minnesota it, said, "Hold my frozen beer." I don't think more people showed up to that game to the than the insurrection. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Oh. Wow! Oh my God! So, so um. Season eleven of the show is going to be just full of like nasty jokes. I don't feel that this whole season is going to be. Um, um, the nasty weird jokes it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun year. Um, by the way, this guy Jack you knows he's not gonna be out months, he's gonna be out for a couple of weeks. So that's good news. Oh, good. So this came so, out. I just so the, what about these Timo? teams? I don't these know. Teams one. have new names. Does that mean that they can put out naming rights and some company can like give them a name? I don't know. We legitimately, we say they have names legitimately. If you turn on the game on YouTube, it literally just says Minnesota versus Montreal. Okay. That's literally what it says. Like they they legitimately don't have names. Like we're not joking. I, That's not a joke or anything. That's I, legitimate. I have a I have a great suggestion. If the association wants to go out to fan base, they can have the fans name the teams. Yeah, that worked so well. Well, well the the original names they came up with were all awful. I mean, they were just god awful. And I think um, you know, all the ridicule that the league got from the internet about these terrible names that they came up with with these teams, you know, for them to scrap the the team names all together and just use, you know, whatever state or city they're representing, mm-hmm. it, it, it goes to show that, you know, they decided that, hey, you know what, we were wrong. And, uh, you know, I, I hope they get it right. I do want to go and watch one of these games. The, the, the game just, inter- just didn't work out with my schedule last like, week and a half. I do want to watch it. They're on YouTube for free. So I do want to go watch one of these games. Apparently, the game is great. I, I want to watch the Minnesota team because they have a Hillary Knight and everything. So I do want to watch the Minnesota team. So mm-hmm. I'm excited for that. Um, we'll jump over to one other thing. It is NFL playoffs time. It is wild card. Yay. Week. And I'm excited. It's definitely going to be a good weekend. It's going to be a good weekend of football. I figured we do some quick picks and um, talk about these games. And hold on, I want to give some shit to um, some people when we get to one of the matchups. Um, <laughs> but let's turn to the AFC. Matter of fact, the game order I have in front of me is how the games are airing on TV in this order. It's really strange okay. how all the AFC games are in a row and all the NFC games are in a row. It's really strange how that the schedule worked out that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know why, but it just it already said as I was typing it out. This isn't from the graphic from the NFL, so it's not like I got a from Wikipedia or anything. It came from NFL graphic. So, oh, there we go. so anyway, AFC matchups. Um, Cleveland, Houston. The game will be on NBC. I, I'm I'm excited for this because it's definitely not a matchup I expected to see in the first round <laughs> at all. Sal, what do you think? Um, Cleveland. I like Cleveland here, Dad. I, I got to go with Cleveland. I mean, they – Gotta yeah, give it to them. These guys are like the never say die team. Um, over on Peacock, which I, I am laughing so fucking hard at all the people complaining that this is a Peacock exclusive game. I am laughing so hard at them because I'm like, 
You knew this weeks ago. Why are you complaining now? They literally got <laughs> two months ago. Like but, they prepared you two months ago for this. <laughs> here's the thing that people have to realize which network the Super Bowl is going to be on. CBS. There CBS. you go. So all your thing about NBC Peacock. And Peacock. But, but it has nothing to do with Peacock. It has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> but um, it's not CBS, apparently not Plus, but it's nothing to do with this. But um, anyway, so Peacock, exclusive game, is Miami and Kansas City. I, I love the meme I saw yesterday that um that Goodell found a way to charge Swifties to watch the Chiefs. Which cracked me up. Not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, honestly, I, I think the Chiefs got this one. They've they've been they've been actually showing up a lot last couple of weeks. I think they're better than their record actually shows, and I don't think Miami is nearly as good as their record says they are. So I think Kansas City is going to advance out of here. Well, um, I hope Miami gets the upset. Because I don't want to deal with fucking Taylor Swift the entire playoff run. <laughs> Fuck Taylor Swift. Oh, wow. He's so hated today. <laughs> there we go. So, I mean, do do we have Sal saying, Fuck Taylor Swift along with the I fucking just kid? did. I just did. Did it again? Because I actually was playing something. So good. Wow. So, I, oh, wait, wait, wait. You know, oh, I want a clean copy. Sal, so, go ahead. Fuck Taylor Swift. Thank you. I'll have that on the subway for next video. <laughs> and, and you know what? And you know we, what? We just... Fuck Taylor Swift, fuck Cody Rhodes, and fuck them kids all at the same time. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. But <laughs> God, we're just going to add to sales list. Holy crap. <laughs> I'm writing it down in my notes. You turn on her camera at the perfect moment with that face. <laughs> Let's see who sell hated today. <laughs> I think I think you sure. I think he should change it to let's see who sell doesn't hate today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the list would be shorter. It, it would, would be, be shorter. People on this show and his and his fiance. That's and his mom. That's about it. <laughs> and, and, and 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 his bird. Yeah, true. Okay, that eh, sometimes when, when she's, she's behaving. I am in Kansas City. Who's winning? I got to go with Kansas City, uh, and I think Ooh. what Taylor Swift has done, I think she's gotten more females to watch football. Listen, they don't have a problem with people watching the Super Bowl, so they don't need oh, her at all. I, I think she's got more females watching football, and I think it's for the, okay. like, the tight ends no. and everything oh, no, else. No, that's the problem. That is actually the problem, in my personal opinion, with this whole thing. And they're not watching the game. <laughs> no, they're, they're watching the tight ends That's on the, the problem. Player. That is the problem. <laughs> that is the Listen, problem. I love me a tight end, okay? But, like, enough's enough. But yeah, are you kidding me? That's like an insult to those of us who actually do watch not just football, but any sport for actually watching it. Like, don't get me wrong. Like Sal, I can appreciate a tight end. But these people aren't watching the full game. They're putting it on in the background, on mute, in hopes that their Lord and Savior, Taylor Swift, will be on the screen. Yeah, I don't have They're a not... problem with, obviously, people that watch the game that have been and whatever. It's these Swifties that have no clue what's going on. Exactly, and, and like I have, and just, I have an issue with like it. the whole like I have an issue with the whole like wearing the T-shirt that says Taylor's boyfriend on it because I feel like that's literally like the opposite of where we want to go with all this because if they wore a shirt that said Kelsey's girlfriend, everyone would be up in arms. Like if if there if they wore a shirt that said like go Travis's girlfriend there would be so many issues and I yeah. feel like that's almost reminiscent of the whole Jonathan Owen Simone Biles thing that's going on right now I don't know if the three of you are I about it I know about it in on that mm -hmm. what, what's it, going on with that um basically he said something like how Simone is lucky to have him whoa that, yeah. that Okay, you're, you're oh, pulling it. Up. Jonathan okay. Owens said he's the catch in their marriage. Wow. 
Okay. Does, so, he, yeah. does he want a does he want a long marriage or a short marriage? So I just I feel like at the end of the day, like Travis and Taylor should be equals. Simone and Jonathan should be equals in their marriage. Like obviously Taylor is more popular than Travis, but that's because Probably she's not. got had how many years on him and she's got a completely different genre of fans. Oh yeah. Big time. And, sure. But to say that Taylor is the reason why more females are watching football is number one, an insult to those of us who have been watching football and can tell you, you know, the differences in positions and what a down is and whatnot. And number two, it's, they're not watching the game. Like, yes, numbers may be elevated, but I would guarantee you that the majority of those people have it on in the background or they're asking their husband or significant other 900 fucking questions. And that person is more annoyed than anything. <laughs> so oh, like, not wrong. But and they're not doing say, it. Yeah, yeah. And they're not doing it to educate themselves either. They're just exactly. doing it to be annoying. At and the end the of the day, thing, let them be. Like, let them be a couple. Like, can we stop zoning in on her cheering? Because as a girlfriend should be, she's cheering him for playing the game. He's accompanying her to her concerts. They're doing things that couples should do and putting them under right. the limelight like this is crazy. Like, I get it that there's going to be paparazzi, but like, I don't need to see her walking into the stadium because they don't show everyone else's significant others walking into the stadium. They don't even show Simone Biles walking into the stadium and she's Not fucking wrong. Simone Biles. Not wrong. So, yeah. like, I'm sorry. Like, they need to treat them the reason why they're on these pedestals is because everybody puts them up on these pedestals. If we mm. remember that at the end of the day, they are two people that are starting a relationship. Well, like people have them walking down the aisle already. Like, can they like fucking make it a year? Like just well, the reason why they are the way they are is because we built them up to this. So like, let's knock them down a peg. And remember at the end of the day, they put their underwear on just like the rest of us. If they don't wear underwear, I don't care. It's a metaphor. <laughs> but like going, co going commando, okay. But <laughs> like at, at the end of the day, like that's a need, visual. Yeah, at the end of the day, we need to remember that they're just people. Okay, and I agree with you. And I'll take it into another. I guess you want to say direction is Simone Biles. Okay, extraordinary gymnast, all the attention. And here's the thing, Jonathan Owens, when they were going out, knew about everything about her and married her. So here's the thing, if you're not comfortable with how much publicity and all this attention that, you, that your wife is getting and you feel you're overshadowed, then you shouldn't have gotten married in the first place. And if you can't live with that, or can't agree with that, then back up, get off, and let this other person continue to live their life. And don't put that wedge in between you and your wife as a thing, because you knew this going in. It's not like you, this was a big surprise. You knew this going in. And the thing with Taylor Swift is the Chiefs are milking her for everything she's worth. In actually, order the, Chiefs to get... are, actually, Dad, the Chiefs are not doing anything. The Chiefs are actually trying to avoid it. The Chiefs are doing nothing. They're making jokes. It's the NFL. Yeah. The, the, the Chiefs. Okay, so I know, the I'll NFL. Just, the Chiefs are literally trying to get away from it. They're trying to make, they're making jokes because they can, but they're trying to get away from it. Like if you listen to the, the bottom line, podcast, they're trying to get away from it. <laughs> the bottom line is NFL wanted Taylor Swift to do the Super Bowl. Taylor Swift said no. And this is their way of ensuring that they can get some media coverage from her because she said no. Yeah, so the NFL is going to milk it for everything it's worth and then some. But here in the long run, I think they're doing more harm than good. And they won't, they won't realize it until the season's over. And unfortunately... They won't realize it until they've broken up, if they break up. Right. Exactly. All right, let's get back to actually what we were here. Where were we? Oh, yeah, I remember where we were. We were on um, Pittsburgh and Buffalo. That's where we were. We were getting to the next game. This yes. game we're on CBS. Ironically, it's the only CBS game here because they have the Super Bowl. So, um, honestly, I did not expect Pittsburgh to be here. They were not supposed to be here. They were terrible. 
a month ago, that they made the playoffs. Buffalo, five weeks ago, were one of the worst teams in the division, and they won the division. Wow, what a weird turn. This has been a weird NFL season. Um, I think Buffalo's going to keep going on this winning streak, and they're going to win this game, but this is a really crazy matchup, Sal. Yeah, um, Buffalo, yeah, they had a rocky start, but um, I feel like they have really kicked it up a notch. I don't think they're going to make it all the way, but I definitely think that they're going to be able to beat the Steelers with no issues. Yes, they will. And here's the thing. Uh, T.J. Watt is out injured, and T.J. Watt is a big part of Pittsburgh's defense. So if T.J. Watt is injured and not playing, that's going to have some breathing room from Buffalo. So, yeah, Buffalo should win this game. Honey, any, any thoughts or just move on? You can just move on. All right. Um, Packers, Cowboys, NFC. This is the Fox game. This is the – and I, whatever it is, and now this matchup, looked at Manny, I'm like, this is going to be the um, 325 game on Sunday. I knew immediately. The minute the matchup was announced, I'm like, yep, this is going to be 325 on Fox. Um, this is exactly where it is. It's the Fox game. Um, it's the only Fox game of the weekend. Um, What's interesting here, somebody actually put a graphic up. I swear, yes, I think we have, a, we have a CBS that put a graphic up. I said the last two years, the Cowboys had the exact same record they have right now and lost in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Three years in a row. I can't go against the Packers. So I picked the Packers to win this game, but it's going to be a hell of a football game. And if they pull this game off, it, who knows what the hell's going to happen after this round? The Packers win this game. So, um, LOL, Dallas chokes. Ooh, okay. Ooh. I like that. Um, that I think with this particular game, it's going to be based on two factors one, the quarterbacks. Jordan Love, Dak Prescott, uh, to see who basically could go error free without, you know, giving the ball away so many times. And two, the running backs to see how much yardage they're going to be able to get and receivers to catch the balls. So based on that, I got to give the edge to Green Bay. Um, okay. Any thoughts on the Packers game? I hope that Simone Biles' husband wins. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Very nice callback. Um, LA, Detroit. I did not expect to say that sentence. Um, Detroit hosting a playoff game. They are division winners. Um, they are in prime time. This is amazing. Crazy. I cannot believe this is a thing that's happened. Um, I want Detroit to win this game. I really do. I really want them to win this damn game. Me too. Keep this going because I did not expect this to happen. Um, now you're agreeing with me on this, obviously. As you just said, absolutely. I would love to see Detroit at least win one playoff game. Yep. That's a green. <laughs> the same thing as a biblical college. Oh, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> that <laughs> I, I gotta go with Detroit on this one. I mean, they're a powerhouse. And I don't expect them to to, to choke on this. Uh, personally, what I'd like to see, if this is at all possible, uh, it is in the next round for the Packers and the Lions to play. I don't think it's possible. I don't think that works with the matchups. I think if the Packers advance, they'd move on to San Francisco. So okay. I think that's how it would work. Okay. I think. I'm right. Yeah, because the Packers are the last seed, so they would move on to San Francisco if they advance. So, that's how that would work. So, all right. Um, one last game. Philadelphia, Tampa Bay. Ooh. I honestly don't care. It's the Monday night game. <laughs> um, not, you know what? I'm happy to hit the Monday night game because I don't watch the Monday night game too delay. So, I can care less about this game. Um, I, I can't go. I can't pick Philly, so Tampa, but I don't care either way. So, <laughs> um yeah you took the words right out of my mouth <laughs> i don't care um fuck philly and uh well, I, can't, I, can't, as well. <laughs> I can't pick philly i just can't do it i can't <laughs> um, no. that... hang on a second tampa bay 
I love the way everyone doesn't oh. know he just flipped the imaginary coin. There was like, actually a coin in his lip. That was the funny part about that joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's it for sports. Before we get to that, I do have some breaking news that I do have to tell Dad on the air that I have not told him yet. Go ahead. It's some Star Uh-oh. Wars news that Dad does not know yet. Because I didn't, he didn't he get his news story for like two days, so he does not know this yet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Hang on. You're gonna be like, hey guys, did you know the Phantom Menace came out? <laughs> <laughs> so there was some Mandalorian news that broke right before we came out of the air. Um, they were waiting on news for Mandalorian, the new season. There will not be a new season of Mandalorian. <gasps> no. Mandalorian. And Grogu is going to be a feature lace film coming out in 2025, and they're starting filming at the end of the month. This is coming from Star Wars. This is a very big deal. I did not expect this news to break today. So, <laughs> so they they canceled the show to do a two hour movie, or, or well, like two and a half hours, knowing them. Well, like I'm looking maybe an the- hour and a half. No, definitely not an hour and a half. It's gonna be at least two and a half hours. You know that because I guarantee this is, this is not just a, I guarantee this is not just a Mandalorian movie. I think they're tying everything together. All the series is, and they're going to wrap things up on the picture. They've been teasing this for a couple of years, as this is they wanted to do. And um, so this is a big deal. Like I, I, I'm waiting for more announcements because if they tie together Ahsoka and they tie together um, the Boba Fett series and everything else, then this is going to be pretty epic if they pull this off. And I, I think, and just like you, I think that you give them enough time and space and basically more details and everything comes together, and then you understand everything with a better viewpoint and outlook. Oh, and John Favreau is, is directing. Well, so, hey, there you go. That is a big deal. That is the big news that broke. There today. you go. I had to break it here because I wanted to see Dad's reaction because that's the big deal. Fabulous. The, that is part of the franchise that deserves the film. So there you go. That broke today. I wanted to make sure I brought that up here. So, okay. And now, let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. All right. So before we catch, start catching up on things, we do a whole bunch of stuff to catch up on. I promise that a little bit of time here. What a fun song. So, uh, so do you even know where that song is from? No. <laughs> Good, honey. Is that from the critic? The it's, TV it's show? For the critic. <laughs> exactly what this is. I remember that show. Kyle would have been dead out. But literally, when I said we wanted to do some movie reviews on here or something, I the, the first song I thought of was the critic. It's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Evil. So we started this last. I think you were on, you were on the show that we started this last year. That's what it was. you missed that show. That's what it was. Anyway, so Dad wrote the Iron Claw. Um, recently. So, quick review. Don't go too crazy, but Ed, tell us how the Iron No spoilers, please. Really? No spoilers? Really? Iron Claw? <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, Liv- Livy doesn't know the story. <laughs> oh. Well, don't worry. The movie isn't, the movie isn't accurate anyway. <laughs> That's like oh, no. watching Selena and being like, hey, I needed a spoiler alert. She died. <laughs> Sal, don't worry. The, the, the movie isn't accurate. They, they, they cut on an entire brother. Don't worry about it. MJF? Yeah. They cut the entire character out. That's MJ, it, Okay. Let me, let me, that, that, the, that, no. the character MJF plays. Clance Von here. I think he's on for maybe ooh, 10 seconds. And that's it. That's terrible. You know, and, but the story does start off rather well, and then I take the director takes some liberties uh, during the film. And the the one thing a lot of people were kind of upset about is the last Von Erich brother, Chris, who also committed suicide, uh, was not mentioned in the movie at all. And the reason that was is because the director felt that the way the movie was going with everything happening, they didn't want to make it darker and depressing. They wanted to kind of 
leave it's a it. Where... Story. It's going to be depressing anyway. I know, but a lot of people, they want to leave it with not so much a dark and tragedy. So everyone else that... dies. Everyone else dies. But what right. more is too much? But they they, they wanted to. They, they <laughs> wanted to point out how Kevin was overcoming this and to continue on and basically have his family raised away from the atmosphere until recently. Right. And Kevin was okay with everything that was going on with the director and the way the, 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 the movie is, except now he's speaking out and saying in the movie, that's not how my father was actually portrayed. He wasn't as bad as the movie made him out to be. So wow. there are some issues, but it is, it is a good watch and is very emotional and uh you know it kind of gets gets you tear it up and you feel for Kevin and everything that he, Kevin has gone through. So sure. I mean if you get, if you have siblings that have passed on before you in in not normal ways I mean then you can relate with it but Yeah, I have a question. But this is Mandy knows this. When we were this wrestling with my family, JD Lee's story I would legitimately angry. Oh, sorry, page of story. Page of story. I would legitimately angry at the end because they legitimately changed the entire history of the end of that movie. Like I was mm -hmm. legitimately angry. I'm like, they literally have a video. You can go frame by frame on how this movie could end, but they legitimately changed it. For you, who lived the Von Eric story, legitimately lived the whole thing. Were you annoyed by the changes? I would always know, especially with the, the timeline and, and the way events happened, and the 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 thing that uh, and even Kyle pointed out is there was a scene where Carrie basically kind of leaves a cryptic message, and Kevin's trying to contact him, and basically he contacts Dad. And kind of I'm like, there's something going on with Carrie. Where is he? Is he there? I don't know. Kevin gets to the ranch, finds Carrie's car, looks and finds Carrie not too far from a tree. He's bloodied, brings him in in the family house and lays him on the dining room table. That's not how it actually went. Fritz found him before Kevin did. And basically he did it for theatrics. And yeah, that got me upset because if you want to tell the story, tell it correctly, not for theatrics, but I mean, I understand you want to get people in to watch the movie. I want, I understand that you want this movie to be successful, but after a lot of people watch it, they kind of kind of, you know, they're like shaking their heads. Like, why did, did you do this change? Why is it because you want to basically have more sympathy for Carrick, Kevin, because he's the remaining sibling of this whole family. No, I don't know. Oh, it, 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 which one is the character that, that, that Zach Efron plays? He's playing Kevin. That's why. You have my attention. That's why. That's the reason they did it. They wanted to make sure the story was around him because he has Zach Efron playing it. Right. Which, and, honest, and, yeah. and, and here's the thing with the way the actors portraying the characters. If you look at pictures of Carrie Von Eric. And how he was very muscular. In the movie, Zach plays Kevin, and it looks like Kevin has more of the muscular build in the movie. So, I mean, if you're going to have someone do carry and have that muscular build, then get someone that's going to have that that build. And I think that's the other thing that people have the problem with is that the muscular build that Kevin had. Kevin was more lanky and lean. But yeah, he could he could move, he could fly, he could he, he can do everything. So I mean, there are some things in the movie that are gonna kind of rub people the wrong way, but it's 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 a good seat. All right. Well, I will see it eventually. Whenever I feel like being depressed, then I will watch Darren Claw. Um, <laughs> I try to say these movies like that personally, but we'll see how that goes. All right. Um, can I can I just get a movie with Zac Efron and Jimmy Allen White that has nothing to do with the Von Erics? Can we just put them together shirtless always? Thank you. Yes, Chef. Would you rather have them do like a workout video together? 
I don't give a shit what they do as long as they're shirtless. <laughs> she just wants them to have a TikTok account together. That's all else she really wants. Who <laughs> doesn't want a movie? Who TikTok account? Watch them. Actually, what, <laughs> what they should do is basically, you know, when they're in training, show them how they're, with their trainers how they're working out. And I'm sure a lot of females wouldn't mind. Here is the issue. I got done watching the bear. And I was like, okay, you know, yeah, chef. Then I see the pictures of him and Zach Efron shirtless. And I'm like, yes, chef. Like, he was hiding all of that under a chef coat? Like, bro, come on. Oh, yeah. Well, that means now Gordon Ramsay has to step up his game, doesn't he? I love you so much, Eddie. I really do. <laughs> I really love you. <laughs> all right. Um. So what did I miss? <clears throat> all right. So we have. A, so here's what's gonna happen. We're not gonna be able to recap everything that happened in the last month. It's absolutely, absolutely impossible. There's way too much that went down. Even though they, even though WWE took like a week to take two weeks off, uh, they still have a lot of stuff that went down. We can't recap everything. Okay, I'll put in the um notes on on the um show. Where you can actually go to get information. I know some really good websites you can get all the information from. But I do have some notes, some news and notes that from each of these companies that are going on. By the way, TNA um Hard to Kill is this weekend. I don't have it in here, but um that is happening this weekend. TNA's return officially is happening on Saturday. Um I'm not sure if I'm ordering it yet because it's a four year pay per view. But the card looks really good, so we'll see. <laughs> um but New Japan Royal Kingdom happened last week. On January fourth, and can I say with a really good show? Going back to one, going back to one night instead of two nights, it actually made Wrestle Kingdom a better show because they were really, really stretching two shows when they were doing mm-hmm. three nights of Wrestle Kingdom. <laughs> but um, so I, I combined the Wrestle Kingdom and New Year's Dash notes because they're all kind of intertwined, weirdly enough. But um, so I'll just go through the important stuff. There was a lot of stuff that happened. I was go through the important stuff for people that on this show actually know who they are. Um, um, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Surprise everybody. Oh, sorry, I forgot. President Ace Tanahashi. He's now the president of New Japan. I forgot to put that in my notes. Tanahashi is now the president of New Japan. Legitimately, this is not a storyline. He is 100% now legitimately the president of New Japan for wrestling. Uh, <laughs> so sorry. President Ace Tanahashi. He um, beat Zack Sabre Jr. to win the um, New Japan the New Japan World TV Championship, the um, New Japan World Championship. Um, it was actually... One year to the day where it, it was one year, it was one year title reign that Zach had the belt. So there you go. Um, but, but then after he won the title, the next night he defended the title to Dash, and then after that defense, there was a video that came up on the screen that Matt Riddle challenged him to a match. Did not see that one coming. Um, and then they announced right before we came out, actually, they announced a whole bunch of these matches that this match is happening on the 23rd of February at um, New Beginning is tomorrow, night one. Um, Dad, your thoughts? Uh, the video of Riddle. Riddle looks a little different, but he looks like he's intense. And if this is the direction they want him to go, and you want to basically poke a bite, you know, poke the bear in the belly with a stick to basically get a fight, then this is it. I I don't think it's going to be easy, but I do see giving a little bit of edge to Matt Riddle. Um, Sal, I love sending you stuff out of context. No context whatsoever. So, um, what was your reaction when I just sent you randomly? Matt Riddle's in New Japan. You're muted, by the way. You're muted. Sal, you're muted. <laughs> Oopsie. Uh, I forgot that I was muted. Um, I was a little confused because, ironically, that day, my friend was on Facebook meeting Matt Riddle at an autograph signing. So, I was wondering what was going on there, but then I kind of figured out that I guess that was pre-recorded. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, any thoughts on Matt Riddle in New Japan? Does Matt Riddle know he's in New Japan? <laughs> I think so. He no, that's not our truth. We're talking about uh, Matt Riddle. Riddle. I, I know he's high all the time, but... <laughs> Actually, he, he, he was at MLW last week, Matt Riddle. And his entrance is, I saw the video, I actually didn't watch the show, obviously, it's MLW, who has time for that? But um, they um they put the video off of his entrance. The entrance is pretty damn cool, because like, he got like the full like welcome back treatment for his entrance, and that was pretty cool. You know, that was pretty awesome to watch. Um, hey, do we know, is New Japan 420 friendly? Probably, I'm going to say yes on that one. Okay. Um, David Finley. 
he defeated Will Ospreay and John Moxley. Well, yes, they celebrate April. They go. They have April twentieth. It's just a universal thing. <laughs> well, <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Oh, that was an R truth joke. That's what that one was. <laughs> uh, um, wait, live, laugh, love. <laughs> yeah. David Finley defeated Will Ospreay and Tom Moxley to win the IWGP Global Championship. Um, for those very confused by this, we were trying to explain this on the last show. The Global Championship is a new championship that is replacing the United States Championship that was, be- was destroyed by David Finley with a mallet. Um, not a joke. Oh, they're getting rid of that title? They got rid of it. They, they literally destroyed it with a mallet. Not joking. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that this bolt replaced it. Um, okay. after, the match, after the match, um, David Finley got into Nick Nemitz's face, who was in the um, press area. Who um, Actually, Nick Nick and Ryan Nemitz came down during the tag title match, and everyone's like, oh, that's cool. They're here. No one knows anything of it. And then David Finley got into his face, and they immediately started brawling. He reminded his right before Okada and Danielson. So the crowd was a little distracted and still Okada's music hit, which is that's a hell of a way to get away from a brawl. Just hit Okada's music. That's how you get away from a brawl. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hit that coin flip. That exactly. Back. Oh, back to the show. Back to the show. Um, and they, they announced that this match will be happening um, at the same show as the Riddle Hanahashi match on the 23rd of February. Um, Nick Nemeth in New Japan. I'm not going to lie. This one I did not see coming. <laughs> I did not expect no. this. This one surprised the hell out of me. Um, good for him though. Uh, good for him. I, I'm actually really happy for him. I thought I did not know what he was going to do after WWE when his 90 day ended. So I'm actually kind of happy for him that he's getting a new lease of life to do something. And to hang out with his brother, his randomly go to Japan, and suddenly you're in like a massive feud. Like this is a very <laughs> like. <laughs> Sal, any thoughts? Um, yeah, uh, I'm excited that he's far. You know, being able to do something and and rebound quite nicely and get right back into the thick of things. But his brother, though, really, I don't mind it. Don't I, it, it worked. On, it worked when you were watching the show. Because so everyone thought, oh, maybe they're going for the tag belt or something. Like, how does it look like? Like, if you watch it live, does it look like? So, like, maybe that's. I mean, it worked. It worked for what they were trying to do. Um, Dad, I. Got to give credit for it. I mean, if you want to go in that direction and with New Japan, go for it. Grab the bull by the horns. Let's see what you can do. Uh, I expect him to basically challenge more wrestlers in New Japan. And, you know, if he gets a shot at the belt, go for it. Um, Honey, any thoughts on Nick Nemeth? Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Uh, Will Ospreay announced his final New Japan full time match. He did this part time work when he goes to AEW, but he's just full time farewell. Um, he's um back in the United Empire. He did a challenging Bullet Club Warrior Dogs, and they and he told David Finley, "You can pick the stipulation," and he picked a steel cage match. Well, in America, that didn't seem like that big of a deal, but in Japan, they haven't had a steel cage match in New Japan in twenty years. What's the big deal with that? Right. Great for them. <laughs> How? Yeah. How? They don't do game matches. They don't do them. Um, apparently, this is the first time ever that there'll be a crowd in attendance for a Sokade match in Japan. Wow. <laughs> so, it's a big deal for them. <laughs> it's a very big deal. So, that one surprised everybody when they announced that one. Like, the reaction to that was like, wait, what? What are they doing? Like, what? <laughs> they had to explain all that on commentary. To their credit, Commentary explained it all. Like, okay, cool. Thank you for explaining why this is a big deal in Japan. Because in America, <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. Like, oh, Japan, this is a big deal. <laughs> okay, cool. <gasps> um, moving on. Um, Okada beat Danielson in their rematch. And no surprise, this hard as anybody in existence because you knew Okada was not losing Wrestle Kingdom again. He's only lost one time at Wrestle Kingdom in like the last five years, and that was to Jay White. Mm-hmm. So like, he's the only person to beat him at Wrestle Kingdom. <laughs> the the thing I liked about that match is the ending. And how they gave, showed each other respect, which is yeah, very, very... That one was amazing. That was a really yes. cool moment. Yes. Um, The next night at the Dash. Um, so the, for those who don't ever watch the, the New Year's Dash special, it literally is a, is a mystery vortex show where you watch the show and find out the card as you go. We don't know the card going in. They tell us as we go. So but last year, you had Okada and Omega tag together in a tag match. Completely surprised everybody. This year, um, you're watching it live. Ishii comes out. They're like, okay. And then John Moxley comes out. It's like, 
Oh. And then Okada comes out. Like, oh shit, it's a tag match. <laughs> then Brian Danielson comes out and it's an eight man tag. <laughs> They're all tagging <laughs> together, like, what the hell is going on? And they actually lost the TMDK at the dash. Surprise everybody, as I'm um, Zach Zabar Jr.'s group. And now we're getting ZSJ versus Danielson on um, February 11th at the New Beginning in Osaka. So that surprised everybody. They're doing it in New Japan. Well, that's a big deal. Okay. And finally, Sensei Naito beat Sonata. No surprise at all to win the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. He finally got to do his roll call at the Tokyo Dome. And um, yeah, the rematch is actually happening already on February 20th. So that is New Japan. Those are the highlights of the show. It, keep in mind, that was five matches and some highlights. It was it was a eleven twelve match show. So like <laughs> um moving on, we'll go to AEW. They had a hair review when we were gone. And boy everyone hated it. Boy everyone hated it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen such bad reviews for a hate review ever for AEW. Like, oh my god, the hatred for World End. <laughs> um the dislike and the disappointment from people after the tape review. Um not gonna lie, I was kind of the same way for the second till the last like three matches of the show. Um, <laughs> I was kind of bored. I was also working on some year end stuff, so I was kind of distracted anyway. But like, not gonna lie, rolling wasn't that good of a show. Um, Sal, your thoughts? Um, I mean, it definitely wasn't your typical fun AEW show per se. But the last couple of matches, I do agree, uh, were the best matches. I definitely say the best ones for last. And um, at the same time, I was a little underwhelmed by the ending and, you know, Joe winning, even though I sh- yeah, I'm excited, don't get me wrong. But I don't know, it's just, it just, it was abrupt and it, it was a little underwhelming and the reveal was yeah, well, underwhelming. I, I don't know. Yeah, we'll I, wasn't there. Even under, I wasn't even underwhelmed. I was just whelmed. There it is. There it is. <laughs> um, so, so, Wonderful. Samoa Joe defeated MJF in, sorry, on Long Island <laughs> to win the AW World Heavyweight Championship. That's fine and dandy because I was actually surprised by the finish because they did the um, they actually did the arm dropping submission, which surprised me that they actually went through with it. That was a big surprise. For MJF passed out. That was a big surprise. But the big mm-hmm. thing that was worth bringing up. Is Adam Cole was revealed as the devil in the most anticlimactic way ever. Um, <laughs> and then it was revealed that uh, Roderick Strong, Mike Bennett, and Matt Haven and Wardlow are with him. And then on Dynamite, they're revealed as the Undisputed Kingdom. Uh, overall, I like Joe being champion. And like like Andy said, the reveal of the devil was so anticlimactic that, yeah, being well was perfect because like it was so anticlimactic. <laughs> like, it wasn't even like they didn't even do a reveal where he took the mask off or anything. He had the mask in his head, like, take the mask off at least. Like, make the dramatic reveal. Like, that at least, like, you missed that opportunity. Like, that got your thoughts on all of I agree with you. The way that you found out that Adam Cole was devil to me was just like, okay, so you take the mask out of your coat pocket. What the hell is that? Where, I mean, it, when you had it fade to black and you'd figure that. The guy with the devil mask would be in front, and the rest of the team would be behind him. And then slowly, you take the mask off in front of NGF and go, "Gotcha." I think you know what they messed up with. You know what they messed up? They shouldn't have the had. Cole well, yeah, but they shouldn't have had Cole out there for the match. They couldn't have had have Cole out for the match because you don't have Cole out for the match. You could have the devil guys attack, hit the lights, and then have Cole sitting in the chair with the mask on, and then do the mask reveal. Because then it actually would have been a little better. Because then yes. it, like, it wouldn't have been so anti-financial because Cole was out there the whole time. You could yeah. do that reveal to bring to how they ended the show. So, like, I think if they didn't have Cole out there, it would have been better. So, um, the other yeah. thing, by the way, MJF, he um, did a, um, tri- a um, the tribute, a player tribune article that came out with a paper view that said he's been dealing with a massive shoulder injury going into this show. <laughs> And he's been on painkillers, and he hates the feeling of being on painkillers, so he wants to go deal with the shoulder injury. So he's going to be taking some time off to go deal with this. Yeah. Um, and the, um, the AW, they pulled him off their website to play along with the whole his contract expired. 
I now don't believe at all his contract expired. By the way, I have no belief in that anymore at all. Um, right. But um, MDF will be off TV for a while. Um, I also feel like that's an anticlimactic because you didn't give us a chance to do the whole tease of is he still with the company or not. Right. Uh, no, overall, disappointing. The whole thing is disappointing. <laughs> it really is. So my thing is because of everything that AEW is doing regarding MJF, um, is there a possibility that he may come back repackaged with a, a different gimmick? Or just be yourself with a being a baby face and you're all gone for a while, you're going to get a big pop and then you come back. Okay. I mean, he'll get the big injury return or something like but... that. Um, what there was something else I wanted to say and I forgot. Um, oh, oh, honey, honey, honey. Yeah. You have a oh, sound yeah. for that? Oh, yeah, I do have a sound for that. Oops. Blake has lost track of the conversation. Wow. Um beat John Moxley to win the Continental Classic and the Triple Crown Championship and the Continental Crown and blah 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 blah. Um another title, another fucking title. Jesus like, I don't have zero problem. It was just like like I think Manny made this point on a show you weren't on, so before the Christmas break. That it, it was like the um the Owen, where you win the title, you're sure mentally, but you don't actually defend it. That would have been fine. Even if you didn't defend it, like next year comes the classic, you get put in the tournament, and you have to defend your title in the tournament next year. That would have been fine. Like that would have been cool. But no, it's this instead. But before we get into all that, Eddie Kingston winning though, this match was great. I thought this was my favorite match on the entire show. Like I love, I love this match. Um, honey, I don't know how much you love Eddie. And Moxley, your thoughts on this match and Eddie winning? I I mean, I I thought it was a really good match. I think that this is the match that they both really wanted to have. And I honestly feel like Mox went up to Tony and was like, listen, if you're going to have Eddie win this, can I be the one that puts him over? Like, And they shook hands after, right? And hugged? They did. They did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They did. Um, and it just, it made for a really good moment because you can tell that, you know, despite everything that went on on TV, that there's nothing but love between the two of them. So. Um, Sal, thoughts on the match itself? Uh, the match is great. I love the match. Uh, I love the ending. I love the, you know, box, you know, giving him that big old hug. Um, I just, I, needed... I, I congrat... yeah. oh, I, just needed, I just needed to mean something. Yeah. But, you know, I- I'm happy for Eddie. Don't get me wrong. He deserves it. But another fucking title. Like, come on now. This is, I agree. It's turning into a, like, it's turning into a, a ridiculous joke that just won't stop. I-, I can't even argue that point. Um, Dad, your thoughts on the match? I, I, I love, I enjoyed the match. I mean, back and forth and you weren't sure one way or another and they gave it everything they had and Eddie came on top and that's when basically the emotional factor kicked in because you are so happy for Eddie that he did this and accomplished it. I mean, when this tournament first began and how he was looked at as the underdog and then to come out on top and be the eventual winner and get all the belts. So now Mr. Kingston's going to have a busy schedule for himself and let's see if he's able to, you know, go the distance and see what happens. I'm going to ask a question that I don't think you know Sal can really comment on much because he wasn't watching a whole lot of AEW during the break. Um, during a little break we took because he was, you know, doing stuff. But um, the concept of the classic, I enjoyed it for what it was. Like I thought it was fun. It was a good tournament overall. Um, there were a couple things that would have changed personally. Uh, I did find out that um, Roosh apparently um was hurt for most of the tournament, which surprised me. Yeah. He wrestled with what, was the, what did I tell you, honey? It was like a broken rib or something like that. Or ribs or something like that for the last second yeah. half of the tournament. So he's gonna be out for a bit after that. Um, I feel like they could have done more for Burke for Frisco instead of just having one win over Jay people. Mm-hmm. But um overall I thought the tournament was really good. I enjoy the Continental Classic and I hope they do it go up a little bit next year. I don't know if they're going to now after this, but um honey, I know you watched the whole thing with me. So what are your thoughts on the Continental Classic as a whole? I really liked it. I felt that honestly, like 
I thought Swerve had a chance. Like I, it was the first time that I really didn't foresee who was going to be winning. Um, it just, I think it was really well done. I hope that they continue it, but I hope that it becomes worth something. Like, don't make it like the Andre or like the Owen, where it's just something. Like, make it at worth something. Like, if you're gonna do it like the G1. Do it like the G1, where they get a title right. shot when it's over for the big title. That's how it works. And, um, well, I feel like what should be done is they should build up this Continental Belt into something. And then, I mean, make it kind of like the Intercontinental Belt. And then have this tournament be for a shot at the titles. Obviously, the first one is going to be for the title itself. But make the, make the belt worthy of someone earning a title shot just don't you know give them to anyone i think the only thing i have issue there is because they have so many damn belts in aw right now i think that's the only problem i have with your logic is is it the same you wanted to be above the tnt championship and the yes. um the what is um or cassidy hold right now it's the international championship that's how it is so like sure he worked his ass off to make that belt relevant so like I understand, but you have the U.S. and the Intercontinental, and do you think that one of those Very is important. more important than the other? Right now, I think the IC actually right now is more important than the Intercontinental, but I see your point. I do see your point. And that's only I'm, going, ju- I'm just saying, like, the Let's the Let's go to the Gunther. Let's not do anything else. You know I, mean? I just feel like, I feel like the TNT belt can almost be, like, the Rampage collision belt. I don't know about it. Kind of like the cruiserweight. Kind of like the cruiser. That's not a terrible idea. That's not a terrible idea at where all. It's, where it's there, but I feel like... You know, you could have two credible belts. It, you know, it's get rid of some of them, but make the ones that are there actually worth it. So, okay. Dad, Dad, your thoughts on the here, tournament? Here, here, about. Here, here's the thing that I'm looking at is the format itself was great and it reminded me a lot of New Japan, which is great and this is the way the format should be. But now, here's the thing when you have the second year of this, so you have the winner of that particular bracket go against Eddie Kingston for a title match and see who's going to come out on top. I would say give Eddie Kingston the bye until you get to the finals. That's not a terrible idea. That's not a terrible idea at all, actually. That's actually a pretty good idea. Yeah. So, all right. I'll do a quick other, other AEW notes real fast. Um, Thunder Rosa finally... Or, returned. wait, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. One last thing. Or kind of going along with that, whoever the title holder is, throw them in like they did with Eddie and make them earn their championship. Also true. That's another way of putting it. Because, I mean, if we're thinking about it, Eddie really did give up two belts to earn them back. And he went through it and he earned them. So if you do that every year with the champion, I feel like... Then it makes the tournament worth something. Yeah, make them make them re-earn, re-earn it. Good point. Very good point. Um, moving on, the Rose that returned on collision. I feel like it was also a very fantastic return where he just leaves the fan <laughs> table, jumps over the barricade, and saves Abaddon. It was really weird. Um, she is actually going to, by the time this airs, people will have already seen it, but she will be making her dynamite return this week. So that's good for her in a weird 10 women tag match for homecoming this week. But, um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm happy that she's back because she was out for a while. I know Mandy's not a big fan of hers. But, like, it's like, I, I'm happy to know that she's back from injury. Well, I'm not, dude, a fan of hers, but it's good to see her back, Sal. Yeah, I agree. Um, but it's weird because there's just so many people on the roster that it was almost like, oh, yeah, that's right. She was hurt, and now she's back. It's like I, I didn't miss her the whole time she was gone. Is that weird to say? Is that that's not weird at all, actually. That's not weird. So, so we all moved on. We all kind of moved on. <laughs> the thing is, is I don't think you're alone in your feelings, and I feel like most of the locker room didn't miss her either. Dad, your thoughts on Thunder Rose? Um, my thing is okay. She's back now. Which Thunder Rose are we gonna get? Are we gonna get the one where everything was shoved up her ass to get that push, or are we gonna see the working Thunder Rosa basically gain? something where she's going to be a, a challenger for the belt. 
I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not even quite sure what the difference is with that. But I understand what you're saying. I understand what you meant. I am. Um, one of the, it's, it's, it's like it's like rules that, go heel. No, no, no. It's like that meme in the office where they're like, "Tell me the difference between the two pictures," and she's like, "There is no difference." <laughs> like, that's definitely what it is. <laughs> they are in the same picture. <laughs> yeah, they are the same picture. But see, my thing is, if you make Thunder Rosa heel, I think that would be a big difference. Uh oh, Mark is going off on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, there's more. <sighs> I told you I have a fun story. And there it is. <laughs> hey. Moving on. Um, I was happy to see it. The apparently we were in New Jersey, so that means we're in New Jersey. We have to slam New Jersey for some reason every time we have a chance. <laughs> um, um, and, but while I thought Tony Storm doing it was hilarious. Because that was actually in character and funny. <laughs> per se, I realized it was in New York. I thought we were in New York. I'm going to go to Broadway. It was hysterical. Because it's very inner character to do that. But when Ryan Ray doing it too, and the Ray made no sense to me. But it was all the setup for the now elite Deanna Perrazzo. Now on the AW yes. roster. I'm excited for this. I'm very happy to see her here. Um, I popped. I, I did too. I was very, When I heard about... The, Wait, Diana? Oh my god, I'm so happy to see her. Um, so I'm excited. She's here. I hope she gets the push she deserves here. This is a big mm-hmm. deal. Um and to do it in Jersey where everyone knows who she is, made it even better. You know, so that was really right. cool. Um, honey, I want your thoughts, because I know I- I'm a huge fan of Diana. I want to hear your thoughts as someone who sure be pop, but the reaction. I think she's very talented. I hope that AEW has learned from WWE's mistake and really gives her the opportunity to be herself like TNA did. Um, Mm -hmm. I feel like, however, what they're going to do... First of all, does anyone else feel like AEW is kind of building up a women's tag team division again? It it does feel like that. It appears that way. It feels like that, yes. Mm-hmm. So I feel like the most logical More titles in the in the in the pipeline. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the the best way to kind of do this or to kind of handle this is to have her and Britt be a tag team. Intriguing. That's intriguing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. They do have history. They have great chemistry. And Britt's kind of been at, is she is she injured or is she just out for right now? She's taking some time off. He's taking some person. He's taking the time off. She went on Twitter, and I think she explained that uh, a lot of people wanted some time from Brit, so she took some time off to let other women shine. Those are her words. Okay. Um. And I also think that they really didn't have anything for her. Like she was kind of just there, and they were putting her in the picture because she is Brit. And I feel like with their background, and if they're trying to really build a women's tag team division, I think that putting them together would be a great idea. But I'm hoping that Tony doesn't drop the ball on this one. Yeah, your thoughts on Deanna? I I think that it would be a good fit for her. And she gives, you know, the company something different, which is good. And I'm 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 hoping that Tony gives her the push that she deserves. And if it is, you know, for a women's tag team, then like Mandy said, her and Britt would be a perfect fit because here's the thing. Now I see something, a team with Sky Blue and Julia Hart down the works, and it'd be great to have her go against uh, Deanna and Britt. Intriguing. It's very, very intriguing. Um, but the more WWE, this is not as much stuff because, again, they took like two weeks off during the holiday, which I did not complain about. But um, so there's not a whole lot going on, but there is some big stuff. First of all, the big news that came out right at the right after the ball drop practically was Kevin Dunn, the longtime producer of the WWE for 30 plus years, who was Vince's right hand man, has officially left the company. <laughs> um, this is a Yay. Very, so I, I'm when I saw this movie, like, wait, what is this legitimately? He's legitimately gone, finally gone. Um, he was the last remnant of Vince McMahon's crew. At this point, he was the last remnant person, so officially all of Vince's guys are gone. Um, so this is good news. 
and I noticed production changes already, right from New Year's, um, from day one on, I've already noticed some production changes in a positive way. <laughs> Just the way day one was produced, and like I noticed something on Raw again this week, like they opened the show differently than they normally do. But like I'm noticing little things that are like, oh, this is cool to see. They're trying things and they're changing things up a little bit, not a lot, but enough for it's noticeable. Um, Del, I heard you say yay. Go ahead, your thoughts. Mm. Um, oh, sorry, I'm not paying attention. Um, I mean, th- does this mean now everything is new? It's Triple H's company at this point. It's Paul Levesque's company at this point. Yeah. Okay. So I am all for that. Yeah. All for that. And, um, you know, after, you know, 30 some odd years, you need some fresh perspective. So, luckily, um, not luckily, that's not the word I want to use, but hopefully, I should say, um, you know, things go in a better direction than they have been for a while. It's been a little promising. And, um, yeah, I, th- I think this is a, a, it's going to be a welcome change. I've noticed, you know, I've noticed lately, less cuts during matches. Like, less, like, random cuts. Like, they're not cutting to the crowd randomly, and they're not cutting the camera, like, 87 times during matches. Like, I've noticed that lately. So And that stupid shake effect on the replay. Yeah. I haven't noticed any of that lately. Which is a good thing. Like, I, those are changes we've been asking for for years. Like, legitimate years. So it's nice to see those things are going away. You know? Um, Dad, your thoughts on all this? Uh, surprised. But then again, if you're the last remaining remnant of Vince's world and the company wants to go in a different direction, then I think, you know, it's all for the best. My thing is with Trips running the show, and and this is a good thing, is it's not predictable. You have no idea how the show is going to go. When Vince was there, everything was too freaking predictable. Now with Triple H at the helm, you have no idea which is what's going to happen. And that's what's going to keep viewers tuned in week after week. I said it to Mandy a couple weeks ago. Um, I think it was day one Raw. I said to her, I'm like, this night Raw was really good. Like, it, it wasn't slow. And the three hours flew by. Like, the show was actually really good. Like, and I hope they keep this up. Like, I hope they find a way to keep this up. Because the last couple of Raws have been really, really good television. Um, Honey, your thoughts? On any of this, you're muted, so we can't even hear you. I agree. I mean, it, I've seen a difference in the show. I hope that it continues, and it's nice that Triple H can finally have his show without any restraints. Like, I'm actually looking forward to Mania this year because it's now Paul Effect Mania fully. This is going to be his full show this right. time around. Um, although I, I, there's news going on, I want to bring it up here because in the case it becomes a story in the next few weeks. Um, so Raw TV deal, I've been talking about it a few weeks back, that Raw still has to have a TV home. There's rumor going around that that NBC Universal is not going to bring the show back. And it, it, that Disney, again, is interested in Raw to go to FX. And the other thing I've been hearing is Amazon wants to bring it over to Prime. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about either one of those. Um, Sal, your thoughts on either one of those options? I mean, if it's going to happen, I feel like the move to FX would be better because I just don't know how many people are going to spend one hundred and sixty dollars a year to get Prime in order to get the channel, the the streaming service. Well, how many people already have Prime though? Because Prime Video is included in your Prime membership, right? But well, I can guarantee it's Prime. not. I can guarantee though it's not millions and millions and millions of people. Fair enough. I can't imagine. Fair enough, fair enough. I mean, I know the NFL games are available to anyone who has the Prime membership. Like, when they're over there, like, like for that, like, if you already have Amazon Prime, you're already getting those NFL Prime games. Right. Like, but who's really watching that, though, you know? I don't know. I, I don't know. Whoever's watching it is definitely isolated because of all Michaels complaining about being the Thursday Night Terrible games. That's all I know. Whoever's <laughs> watching those games is getting the isolation of Val Michaels. Um, Dad, your thoughts on these rumors going around? My thing with Amazon, if that is going to happen, would that 
basically inflate the cost of a membership. I don't know. I, don't I know. mean, I mean, and yeah, I, I yeah, think Bell going over there didn't. I don't know if their W going over there will. Yeah, I mean, and I think like so well, they also they did say that they're going to be adding commercials to their service soon. So who knows? Oh, true. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. And and I agree with Sal that it, FX would be a good fit for that. And I think more people, you know, if you're not streaming and still have cable, that you'd have the best of both worlds that way is basically have streaming and cable with FX. So it would be a better fit and go out and, and reach more of a broader audience. And I just thought about this. Um, Hulu is now on Disney Plus and FX shows go to Hulu. I wonder what that would mean for Peacock with WWE Network. I just thought about that. Actually. Who knows? Sure. Uh, who knows? I mean, we just have to wait and find out and see what happens. Honey, any thoughts on these rumors, on these possible networks that might bring Raw to their station? For me, it doesn't matter because you turn the TV on and I watch it no matter what it's on. So Fair enough. I like that logic. Fair enough. Indeed. So we had one massive title change in WWE in the last couple of weeks, and that was actually the Tag Team Championships. Tana Chance and Caden Carter beat Kelsey Green and Piper Niven. Um, I, I honestly, the funny part is it was the last Raw before the New Year. It was the last one before the, they went on their, new, on their Christmas break. And they did two Tag Team title matches. And I and Mandy, I was watching the show up in the office because of Mandy was working, and I was wrapping Christmas presents on the floor, and she's working. And we're watching the show, and I'm like, are they going to change both title team titles when the show's <laughs> over? Because the Creed's were against Judgment Day at the end of the show. I'm like, are they going to change both titles? They didn't. But it sure felt like it as the show went on. But um, I'm, not, I'm happy to see Katana and Caden win the titles. Um, Honey, your mm -hmm. thoughts on them winning the belts? It's nice that an actual tag team won the belts. Who 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 would have thought? Like that is a possibility. <laughs> um, I have a question for you, honey. Kabuki Warriors, does that count as an actual tag team? Because they were together for a long time before Kyrie left. I yes. Okay, that's one of the clarification. That's one of the clarification. Because it's part of the damage control. Kabuki Warriors part of the damage. In in my opinion, a tag team is formed naturally. Not from the behind the scenes people picking two names out of a hat and throwing them together. Fair enough. Fair enough. And then just giving someone a belt. Yeah. Like I understand the whole Piper situation where who was Chelsea originally tagged with? Sonia. But even at that, there yeah. was no well, reason. At least, well, it made sense because they were like they, they actually tagged together for a reason on the air. But then Sonia got hurt, so it didn't matter. So they had to figure something out, and then it wanted to build mm -hmm. up Chelsea. So yeah, I, but having a reason to tag team together does not make you a tag team. Fair enough. I, I well, we never got to see a little bit more of that because I think they had more planned and we never got to see it because when it got hurt. Look at what happened there. We never got to see more of it. <laughs> um, Sal, I know when I texted you, you were not happy. I told you about this one, but your thoughts now was it's been like a month since it all went down. <laughs> um I mean it's a travesty that Chelsea Green lost. She should complain to the manager. Is she still to. even doing that gimmick? Is she still she even is. doing that gimmick? Oh, she's totally doing that gimmick. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 She goes to Adam Pierce and says, I'm gonna go to um Nicholas Aldis for my for my for things now. Yes, I love I love when she calls him Nicholas Aldis. But <laughs> also <laughs> I would like and here you can start a clip right here, honey. Go for it. Time to stamp this. Go for it. I would like to speak to the manager as to who decided. That Samantha Irving can no longer say Chelsea Green because I you agree. fucking suck. The end. Fair enough. That was the only thing I liked that she did, and they took it away from me. I know you're not a fan of Samantha Irving for some reason. I don't know why. You're I don't not... like her. I don't like her. I don't like her style. I don't like her voice. I don't like her. Add one fake to the acting. list, people. Add one to Let's... the list. Here Let's... we go. Go ahead, Sal. Let's see who Sal hated today. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, did, did I ask you about something? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I'm I'm glad finally that they put the belts on the correct female tag team because these two have been workhorses since NXT and they deserve the belts for their hard work. And kudos for this. And hey, if down the road, you know, 
the match happens between them and the Kabuki Warriors. Let's see what happens. Who? Kabuki Warriors. Kabuki Warriors. The Kahuki? Kabuki. 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 <laughs> there also, there's also the um... Suzuki. Yeah. Yeah, Kawasaki. How's that? Not, not bring up um. Do not bring up Death Grandpa Suzuki in this. We did not ask for that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was gonna say there is also the um. Hell tag teams over on Snapchat. I can't think of the name right now. The um, Isla Dawn and um. I can't think. Oh, of Oh, two kinky bitches. It, the two the, them. Yes, <laughs> the ones that they popped up out of Christmas boxes that they were like all I, I, was weird. I, I, that was very strange. <laughs> Wait, two kings isn't there? I'm a fire. I'm a fire. There you go. Fire. That's not the team name. No, it's not the team name, but it's gonna be the name of this episode, I think. <laughs> could, could could you name a Tay team like Fire and Ice? Oh my god! No context for that clip. No context for that title whatsoever. Oh, all right, let's move on. Um, the injury that for some reason Sal celebrated. Let's see who Sal hated today. Charlotte Flair is out for at least nine months. With an egg injury. Oh, no. Leg injury. Nine months. No, 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 no. Leg oh, look, no. At, look, at, look at my fingers. Did you see that? <laughs> How did I do that? <laughs> Eddie, that was weird. But no, Sal, we actually watched the injury live on SmackDown. It's a real injury. We watched it live. We actually watched no, it. I know. I saw, I saw the replay. It was fucking it crazy to watch live because it was so abrupt. <laughs> well, that, that's like everyone <laughs> think Sal, let's show it. Nine months. Like, okay, now there's going to be an extra extra person in the uh, in her family. I don't know what's going on. How did I do that before? That was so cool. I don't know what you doing anymore. I'm writing it. <laughs> well, I'm, it was like a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm so, glad I'm so glad it was recorded there because I could find it when we get done with the show. My fingers are starting to hurt trying to replicate it. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. You can tell Sal doesn't have Sal's experience with his finger. No! No! Don't! <laughs> and the show comes to a screeching halt. <laughs> so, so I have a good title for the show. Sal is magic fingers. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! All right. Um, or lack thereof, apparently. Let's move on. <laughs> Call up and return. There are the couple here. Tyler Bate. He came up to SmackDown and the tag with Butch against Pretty Dudley. And to, uh, to Dad actually hinted at this a few weeks ago, where that it kind of just finally happened. Um, all to the pain aligned with Carry on Cross and Scarlet. We had Paul Ellering show up for some reason. And uh, oh, Paul Ellering showing up was pretty cool because you cut to this thing. Um, Scarlet and Scarlet with new hair. I didn't really do new hair. I'm not gonna lie, Sal. I didn't realize the new hair on TV because I see it in pictures all the time. So I forgot it was the first time on TV with the hair. <laughs> I see it online all the time. Then I forgot it was new hair. And then she comes out with carrying a cross without his whole like goth getup. He did a fucking beater and like he comes out and then Paul Ellering comes behind it. It was a fantastic reveal. Like it was an amazing reveal for those who remembered Paul Ellering and also the pain's um connection for him to come out and then also the pain attack Lashley and the Prophets. So that was a really. Did Austin Japan do anything this whole time they were gone? I, I, I haven't heard their name in years. Bullshit. I have not heard the name in years. Like, oh. <laughs> I, I, okay. I could have sworn they were doing something. Maybe I got confused with the Ascension. I may have got confused with the Ascension. That they're on the independent circuit. Okay. They were, like, I, I heard, I saw them doing like, I saw the Ascension all over the place during WrestleMania season, but I haven't heard Austin Japan in years. So. Mm-hmm. They look great though on SmackDown. They did look great. Oh, like, setting up um, all the pain and carry on cross against um Lashley and the Prophets. Um mm-hmm. and it's a Scarlet. And then I don't know, me were talking before the show today that Bianca wants to join up with the Prophets and Lashley. So that could be interesting and fun. Hmm. So that could be fun. So but- Let's let's put this scenario in. You've got the Judgment Day that have most of the belts. So, say Authors of the Pain wants to basically make a move and go after the belts. So, would you have Carrying Cross make a new faction out of this? That's literally what they're doing. It's a faction okay. that's formed. That's literally what happened here. Do you okay, think they I mean, went out for a cup of coffee together only? Like, <laughs> literally, did they just meet backstage? 
they just met up backstage and they were like, suck, want to go out together? Like, yes, it was planned. Yeah, and we, we'll God. just go fifth bumps and then after the show, we'll just slam some brewskis. Yeah, whatever. Seriously. Sometimes I wonder about you. But well, you know what? You know what? All that is irrelevant because of the next thing Blake's going to say. I was gonna say, but the only thing I will say though, that would involve the Judgment Day actually wanting to work on SmackDown more than once a month. So that's the other thing. <laughs> but all the that other is thing. not what I was talking about. <laughs> so next thing is a big deal. Next one's a big deal. Then for the end. Um. So for those who watch Day One Raw, Sal was not one of those people. <laughs> that I watched Day no, One. I was not. Um. They tease a former champion coming back on the show. Well, actually, it was teased on. Actually, it was teased on Twitter, and Triple H ran with it and decided to have. What's them. Twitter? Um, tw- Twitter, sorry, Twitter, and they were having some fun. Who? Um, Paul Beck decided to have some fun and say, "Yeah, I have a former champion coming on the show." And when they revealed, when Samantha Irving announced the former champion, it ended up being Jinder Mahal. <laughs> hey, hey, he was a former champion. Yes. Okay, don't, don't, don't knock no, 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 I'm not knocking you that. It was the deflating reaction from the crowd, not expecting Jinder Mahal. Like it was fantastic. <laughs> so, it was what like, they did. All you could have heard was. Wah, wah, wah. Pretty much, it was it, like it was. It was perfect. What they did, what Paul and I did here was absolutely perfect. Because they did the Mahal come out, but everyone was expecting somebody bigger, and he comes out. He's playing, you know, he plays heel, and he plays the um, I'm, an, I'm I hate all American card for some reason, and then he starts. He apparently said, dude, dude, it's it's, it's mutual. It's mutual. And he's well, saying, you, you, you got to add. The stuff he was saying, the stuff he was saying, like he elite was actually true. But like, that didn't really work anyway. <laughs> it didn't work. Well, you 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 also have to add that he's the modern day Maharaja. I know, but I didn't care I about that. I gotta add anyway. shit. That wasn't point. That wasn't point of what I was saying. That was I don't know what I'm talking about. But um, so he goes. He even says the national anthem in Punjabi, which is hysterical. And then <laughs> the rock comes out. The crowd goes absolutely berserk for this. And Samantha's fake acting. I don't know if that was fake. I honestly don't think it was fake. I don't think she knew. I honestly don't think she knew because apparently not a lot of people knew who was in the building. From what I heard behind the scenes, not a lot of people knew who was there. Um, and he came out. Everyone went crazy. And um, he and Mahal go back and forth and do a whole spiel. And um, and then he beats up Mahal. And then he gets on the microphone, talk to Sam. As you do. I'm literally shortening it because we're getting to the point. And um, we get to the ending and he goes and says, San Diego, I love you. And then he realizes he had to say something important. He literally forgot what he was going to say. So he did his whole spiel, forgot he had something else to say. And he realized, oh shit, I have to say something now important. And this is what he said. Should The Rock sit in a booth? (laughs) Or should The Rock sit at the bar? Or should The Rock sit at the head of the table. Um, admittedly. Well, that wasn't subtle at all. <laughs> funny, funny, he said that. And you know what the great part is? The whole crowd, it caught, you hear the crowd pop. That was actually, they kept going for a little bit because the whole crowd was like, wait, what? Did he, did, did he just say what he thought we all heard? Is that what he just said? So everyone reacts. We, everyone caught the reaction. It was like, wait, oh shit. And then everyone thinking like, wait a minute. <laughs> now we have to do Rock Roman. But where are we going to do Rock Roman? And how are we going to do Rock Roman? Like, what are we doing? Um, so there's various theories. Well, you have to do it at Mania. You have to do it at Mania. But is, or is Rocky going to be available for Mania? Is Rocky going to be available for Mania? That's the problem somebody brought up. The actor strike hmm. is over. The actor strike is over. But things are slowly getting back to normal. Slowly. So is Rock only sure. available? Is Rock only available? Because the rumor going around. This is the word going around. Limited Chamber is in Australia. Right. And the Australian government apparently said, if there's a way to get The Rock here, let's try to get him here. And then suddenly, The Rock is on television on January 1st, saying he wants Roman. Are they setting up Roman and Rock for Australia? Not at WrestleMania. I feel like it would be a completely wasted opportunity to have one of the biggest main events not be at WrestleMania 40, which is a milestone pay per view year. You know what I mean? I just no, I know what you're saying. I feel like it's it would be a wasted opportunity. Um. Okay. I I I'm mixed because I obviously 
the, obviously for those who aren't blind to it, and they're setting up Cody Roman too at WrestleMania. That's just the rumors going around. That's what's going to happen. The Rock throwing the rocket in the wrinkle. Hit it. Hit it. Oh yeah, sorry. Fuck Cody Rhodes. But my whole thing is, I, I I want Cody to win the title. I really do. I think Cody. I think Cody should have won the title at WrestleMania last year. Like I maybe go- WrestleMania forty four. Grace. Um, <laughs> I I'm in the camp of Cody wins the belt at Mania. I'm also in the camp that Roman should have had two matches a couple of years ago when it was Edge and, Edge and Dana Bryan. It shouldn't have had a triple threat. It should have been two matches. Um, honey, what are your thoughts on this one? Where do you have the match? What do you do in this situation now that the Rock is available? What are your thoughts? Okay. I agree with you, Blake, only because the Rock has had his moments. And... Roman Reigns has had his moment. It is time to pass the torch on. I also throw out there, does Roman Rock even need the title? No, it doesn't. That's the other thing. That's the other thing. Like that's a bigger deal. Like does it even need the belt? It's like like Rock I mean it sweetens the pot a little bit though. Yeah, but Rock does it because it Wait, yes. does it though? Because the Rock doesn't need the belt, and what's he going to do with the belt if he wins it? And also, also using logic here, but he called out the head of the table. He never said anything about the belt, everything about championship. Maybe mm-hmm. he, at the end of the day, he just wants the travel chief because he like, wants to be the head of the table because he's the Rock. Here, yeah, Daddy, yeah, your I thoughts. Mean, here, here, here's a here's a theory on that. Okay, if you look at bloodline storyline wherever it's worth and you've got roman the self-proclaimed head of the table okay now in the family situation which everyone's related is maybe rock has been sent by the elders to correct roman's bad behavior bad mistakes and basically come in and basically kick his ass and take the rock be the head of the table. Now everyone has to answer to rock. No belt involved. He's the family the corrector by the elders. I mean, we did have that match at Money in the Bank. That was the what was it? The the, the um the bloodline implosion. Remember how that match was back in July. So we have had matches that are literally about the bloodline and about the tribal chiefdom and all the kind of stuff. We've done this already, but Rock Roman. I'm in the camp that Earth 29 seen a rock too didn't be the belt. So like I'm in that camp too. So like I don't think my that- my, oh. my thought process is you can't have this monumental historic reign of over a thousand days and who the hell is gonna beat him? Who the hell is gonna beat him? And he's basically beat everyone at this point and not have the fucking rock of all people come back and not make it into a night two main event WrestleMania match. I'll throw this out. I'll throw this out as something. What if Roman beats the rock at the chamber and that makes him even more unbeatable? So that when Cody or whoever have him beat the rock at WrestleMania at the biggest stage. Okay. But we don't. I don't want his title reign to continue anymore. Can it just be <laughs> over? And also, like in an ideal world, yes, The Rock would be able to beat Roman. But The Rock is also not The Rock of two thousand and three. I mean, he was out of breath on Raw true. during Rebel's elbow. He was literally out. Like of- if you I heard. Ever- yeah, if you heard what the clip you played, he sounded like he was winded and he was tired. Like I and edited like, around it. I edited around him catching his breath. Like I literally edited. Yeah. It. <laughs> like, do we really feel like The Rock today can beat Roman? Like, is that actually believable? That's why I say you do the match at the chamber and headline it. Like, I, I'm sorry, the international shows are a big deal. Like these international pay per views are a massive deal. You need big main events. You need something big. Why not do this? Not fair. I, I think okay. The, all the right. other thing is, is we need to think that this is an international event and not just the elimination chamber, which is typically right. in the past it's been a throwaway event, except for maybe deciding 
who will be a challenger at WrestleMania. Right. But other than that, it's it's a throwaway event. And I feel like, especially with it being in Australia, they need something to make it more of a headline. And having Rhea can only do so much. And that this is a, a pretty clear way of doing that. I mean, at the end of the day, you can have, you can literally have on the graphic, The Rock versus Roman Reigns in Australia. Again, international hate review. Like, for instance, they're going to France. You need a big main event for that show. You need a big main event for these international shows because they're, they're, that's the difference. I think Manny made a good point there that in the, in the, because the show's in the U.S., you're right. You don't do the show at the chamber. You do the match at the chamber, you don't do it if it's in the U.S. But we're not in the U.S. We're not dealing with the U.S. show here. We're, in, we're doing an international pay-per-view, and it is not those weird, like, um, international or UK-only pay-per-views they used to do back in the day. This is a legitimate show. And plus, you know, people who are at Peacock are like, yeah, we'll take The Rock on this show. 100%. Like, do that. That'd be great. Boost up this pay-per-view that no one's probably going to care about if you don't have The Rock on it. <laughs> well, yeah, you were saying something. The other thing, too, is how WWE has been advertising all these pay-per-view events that are going international. So, I mean, they're, they're promoting it that, you know, and if you're going to promote this going international, then have something worth something <laughs> Yet you're, you're, you're advertising it. So, I mean, if you're going to do it in Australia with the rock, that basically solidifies what you've been putting out as far as advertising it. Okay, we're going to go worldwide. We're going to go international. This is the way to do it. Let's, oh, let's also think, like, we don't want to go all the way to Australia and give them an episode of SmackDown. Not wrong. You're not wrong. No. By, no. I will say, by the way, you were asking, Katarina, if by the time this ep- our episode drops, it'll be 1,225 days. That's how long the rain is. So. It, well, the other thing to keep in consideration, the contenders for Roman's belt. <laughs> you get the uh, LA Knight, yeah. LA Knight, and you've got AJ. Okay? But you know what? Let's be honest. I've, had, a, I've had enough of everyone except for The Rock. That's it. <laughs> Wait, did you say fuck everybody except The Rock? That's what he said. Okay. I got LA Knight. Okay. <laughs> Here's... Yeah. Okay. Here. I got yeah. Him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here, how about this scenario? Okay, <laughs> Rock Oops. wins the championship. No, that's not necessary. Hang on, that's not necessary. No, 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 I, I, okay, I don't want to see Roman with the belt anymore. I no longer fucking want to hear finish the story. So if we could just clean up both of these at Mania, that would be fucking fantastic. Thank you. I, I, <laughs> um, I, I don't even know what to say anymore. I think we're done here. I think we're done. I think we're done. <laughs> we're done here. Okay. We'll talk more about the Rumble another time. We'll talk more about if they announce Rock Roman. We'll see who's right on this one. We got there. Um, let's get out of here on that note. Um, let's do this. Let's we'll hit the music. We're going to close with the brand new AJR song that came out right at the end of the year called Yes, I'm a Mess. And we are all going to get out of here. Sal, why don't you do the spiel? And I, I go for it. Uh, for more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media or watch the show on YouTube, go to our wonderful, fantastic stupendous website the Blake please 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 don't forget to comment or leave a rating and review and uh, we will mock it i mean read it on the show also by the way I, again you go to spotify and go to the q a and you can ask questions there and also if you go on below our link right here in the description you can see the link free link with all the information you need there that's your thing hey as always has been your pleasure and if you happen to have a local independent wrestling organization where you live at, please patronize these people because these are young men and women coming up in the world of professional wrestling, sports entertainment, and they want to show you what they're able to do. As I <laughs> did it, <laughs> and if they want to show you what they're able to do 
As there were balloons as... before. <laughs> How okay, they sorry. entertain you by basically being in the whole package with their skills, their gimmick, their promos, the whole works to get to a national organization and get that brass ring to be international superstars. So and please, please nice to people, but do it safely. And hey, be nice to each other. We only got one world. Let's make the best of it. We got us distracted right now. Oh, honey, why don't you get any point if you want to get into or tell people where they can find you or whatever? I'm Curvy Knockout. You can find me pretty much anywhere. And I add all my shit on there all the time. So I won't bore you guys with that. However, right. you can either pay for an independent wrestling show or you can just try to get balloons on Zoom. It's <laughs> pretty much the same kind of entertainment. Pretty much. Um, by the way, I do want to know you've been Kirby Naka. I did rebrand my uh, all my stuff. I'm now on um, Hot Legend 76 and all my social medias. So that's the thing. Um, that being said, next week we'll be back. I don't know what we're talking about because I, I there's no big show or anything. So we'll we'll see what's up and maybe we'll preview, we'll check out the NFL and stuff like that. I don't know. Let's get out of here. I'm Blake. I'm Sean. I'm Mark. Um, thank you, honey, for coming on this week. This was awesome. And you've been listening to the Blake and Sal Show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Wingy balloons. See ya. It's <laughs> magic. What can I say? Mr. Magic Fingers. Finger bang. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Goodbye. And good night. Bye-bye, bitch. <laughs>